Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and welcome to a Q&A get ready with me video. So we're gonna put these in my hair. I already have my outfit on and my hair done for the most part. So this is how I do my makeup. <laughs> I don't have any like small clips so I have to use these big ones so a few weeks ago on my instagram i actually hosted a giveaway celebrating my seventh year on booktube so when you're watching this today on july 2nd this is my seventh booktube anniversary i like to always make a little video to like celebrate it and whatnot so that's what we're gonna do if you entered in the giveaway i asked you to ask me a question um for me to answer in a q a so, and by the way, those giveaway winners have already been chosen and contacted, and I will be sending those books off um, as soon as possible. So, uh, my face is a bear right now, okay? And we're going in with a very rubbed off NYX um, jelly primer. Also, when I do these, do y'all wanna like know what products I use or not? Like, I guess I just like show them off, um, cause why not? I told people in the giveaway, like you can ask me any question you would like, whether it be book related, personal work, whatever the case may be. So here are the questions. There are actually quite a few. So we'll see if we get through all of them. And I love how I didn't like prepare at all for this. I was like, let's just sit down and answer these questions. So um, I think there are a few I glanced at them briefly like that I am gonna have to think about. <laughs> While my primer sets for a little bit, um, someone asked me if you could read one book for the first time again, what book would it be? Ooh, okay, that's a great question. I'm thinking of a book that maybe like has like a plot twist or something that like I can never read again for the first time. I think I'm gonna go with Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas, honestly. <laughs> like reading that book was an experience. I don't think I've ever reread that book, honestly. Um, I think I've only read it the one time when it came out. Um, and I actually have a vlog of me reading this book start to finish me sobbing my eyes out and just like profusely crying at every step and moment of reading that book so um yeah <laughs> i'm going in with the elf camo cc cream i like um kind of like a lighter coverage even though it says full coverage on here it's not really full coverage i don't think so like i've seen fuller coverages um and in the whitest shade they have <laughs> Because your girl is very pale. Um, but definitely Kingdom of Ash would be my answer for this because like there is no way you could experience that book again. Like there's so much that happens in that book. It's ridiculous. My next question is what are your top five favorite books? Now this is a hard one. I hate picking my favorite children. The first two that come to mind is Radiance by Grace Draven. That one's a fantasy romance, by the way, friends to lovers. Y'all know that I love that book. I will not stop talking about it. And then I also love I Don't Know Live by Hannah Bonham Young. That's like a new favorite of all time for me. I absolutely am obsessed with it. I'm trying to think of another one. Like I love so many books. Maybe Always Only You by Chloe Liza. Now, by the way, I'm not saying these are my top five favorite. Now that I'm thinking about it, they're top, they're five favorite books of mine. <laughs> Cause watch when I'm gonna like edit this, I'm gonna go back and be like, I can't believe I forgot that book. Maybe Pride and Prejudice would also go on there. So that's number four, love Pride and Prejudice. Oh, but it also could be Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre used to be my favorite book of all time. Maybe we'll just put Jane Eyre as number five. I think I was a classics girly, honestly, just because I wanted to say that I read the classics. Now that I've grown in my reading, I've realized like, no, like you were just reading those because you wanted to say you read classics. Um, but the ones with like romance in them, like Jane Eyre, and um any book by jane austen like i will love to the end of my days so doesn't this look so freaky like i have foundation only on the bottom my forehead is completely blank sometimes i don't even like to use foundation sometimes i'll just put on concealer but when i'm filming i kind of like an even slate but when i'm like going out and doing things and like actually going on with my day i normally don't put on foundation but y'all are special Okay. The next question I have is how do you balance a plentiful reading schedule with work? Okay, great question. Um, and I don't really have one for you. Um, other than if you don't already listen to audiobooks, like you need to get on that. I'm, I'm just saying that has completely like saved my reading life because I've been having like bad migraines for the past few years and audiobooks have really helped me with my love of reading because I want to read so bad. Um, but my migraines are like, <laughs> no, we're not going to let your brain focus or feel good enough to read words on paper or words on a screen. So definitely get into audiobooks if you have not yet. I listen to them on the way to work, when I'm on a break at work, lunch break at work. Like I'm constantly listening to audiobooks. My job, I do sometimes have a little downtime to where I'm able to listen to something or read something. 
um but i don't really have a great balance honestly i don't i'm trying to get better about it i haven't read a lot of books honestly um re this year um compared to recent years and it's like my first full year of having like a a big girl job so i i honestly cannot give you a right answer <laughs> i love this next question it says if you were to be stranded on not hoth who would you want to be resonated to okay so not hoth if you didn't know is the planet from ice planet barbarians here um also by the way i'm going with an elf concealer i love elf products they're really affordable and they look beautiful um so yeah i'm using the camo concealer corrector um in like literally the lightest shade ever it's probably like snow white or something that's probably the name of the shade <laughs> for all i know um but not hoth okay who would i want to be resonated to there are so many like fun men a part of that tribe but i am not a big fan of like the alpha male and like real life in person like I want a sweet softy in real life um so honestly the first person that came to mind is Sessa. Sessa is mated to Sam in Sam's Secret. He is younger than Sam um but like I don't care um I don't give a crap about that but like his maturity in him like knowing that he wants a mate like I love a man who's down bad for his heroine also so um like if I'm the heroine like by all means be down bad for me. My favorite book, a part of like a Rubyverse like IPB series is um, Barbarian's Redemption, which is Beck and Ellie's story, but Beck would never be mine. Like Beck, I love you Beck, but you're with Ellie. Like Beck and Ellie are perfect. That's why I love that book. I could never be with Beck. So um, I would have to go with Sessa, even though I feel like that's probably not a popular choice, but he is so stinking sweet. Do you have a fond or nostalgic memory of reading a certain book or any books you loved when growing up. Oh, okay. One of my favorite books growing up was The Miraculous Life of Edward Tulane. Um, I think that was the first book that I read that I absolutely like uncontrollably sobbed at. <laughs> like I was sobbing reading that book. I think I was literally in like third grade or something. And man, that book just pulled at my heartstrings. If you know, like, this is the story about, like, a, a stuffed rabbit who gets lost and he's trying to find his, um, his, like, owner, his person, his little girl that he belongs to. And, oh my gosh, it's like, it's like a chapter book, though. It's not, with, like, these beautiful pictures. It's not, like, only just a picture book. Like, it's, like, it's long. Like, I, I have it on another shelf over here. My next question is, do you plan on writing about more plus-size main characters, an example size 20 or plus? Um, this is a great question. So, um, I am dabbling a little bit in writing currently so we'll see what happens okay um but I would love to write a plus size main character I would love to obviously with like um sensitivity readers I want to make sure what I'm writing is worthy enough to represent that community obviously what started your monster slash alien romance journey oh that is a great question um so I actually I think it was a tv show <laughs> So I grew up watching Roswell in New Mexico, not the new version, um, but like the original one. And I think that like really sparked my love for alien romance because I was in love with Max and Liz. If you don't know, that's like a 90s show. Um, I bet you can find it on some streaming service. Um, but I absolutely loved that show. And I think that sparked my love for like alien sci-fi, like teen romances. Um, and it kind of like just grew from there. My first alien romance was actually a Ruby Dixon book. This, it was Lauren's Barbarian, which if you know Rubyverse, like is a spinoff series. And so I was kind of lost, but the, but the cover was so bizarre. Like I had to pick it up. Like I was like, okay, that looks crazy. Let's read it. It kind of has been my motto for a lot of things in life. Like, Ooh, that looks funny. Ooh, that looks crazy. Let's, let's do it. You know, <laughs> um, to an extent, to an extent. <laughs> Someone asked me what my academic background is. Before I answer that question, I have my elf liquid blush. I got into liquid blush like a month or two ago. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. And so, yeah, so my academic background. So I actually graduated from college in December of 22, even though my class ring says 23. I actually graduated early because of um, some health stuff going on in my life. If y'all don't know, I have a chronic illness and it flared really bad the last year or two of college. And um, some things 
happened. Um, so I had actually graduated a semester early. I got my degree in education in four through eight English and social studies, um, but I did not graduate with my, with my certificate because I graduated early without going through with clinicals. Um, so I have my degree in education. I have a degree, I graduated college, but I do not have my teaching certificate. So I'm technically not allowed to teach. <laughs> so, so I basically have this degree that I'm not able to use. Um, which kind of stinks, but um, I love kids. I always have. I love reading So I really wanted to make that my degree um, And I'm trying to honestly step a little bit away from the teaching world right now and try and dip my toe and get a shot out at um, the, the book world um, so I am starting in a small author assistant business, so um, if you never need like author assistant help you know where to find me, I guess. So that's what I am trying to get into right now. Someone asked me a horrible question, which is what is your favorite sequel? That is so hard. That is such a hard question. Um, I mean, Empire of Storms is like one of the best books ever written, but so is A Court of Mist and Fury. So like, I have to say like those two, like they're fantastic sequels and like completely shifted like both series in my brain and the writing is immaculate in both of those books. What is a book you'd recommend for beginners in the romance verse? Okay so a romance book for beginners. I think I'm gonna do two. So one that I think is a tried and true that a lot of people would recommend is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. I think that's a great great foray into the genre. That one is about a heroine who moves to a small town and kind of like befriends the town grump who is Archer who is not able to speak and that is just such a beautiful romance. And then I also have to go with another tried and true which is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Um, that one is more enemies to lovers like animosity, bickering, um, where our heroine is a city girl and our hero lives in Alaska. She's visiting her dad in Alaska and he works for her father's like plane company. Um, and yeah, they don't really get along because they have very different beliefs and values, I wanna say, um, and what they deem to be like their perfect life. So it's gonna be difficult to see how they can work out this relationship that is slowly morphing into love. So I definitely recommend those two if you're getting in to romance. There are obviously different books I'd recommend if you're not wanting contemporary, but I just went with two contemporary ones. Someone asked me why I decided to start my channels. Great question and I love how they know I have multiple channels. Um, so I have this one, Ava's Romance Books. It used to be a different name, um, but because I thought I was going into teaching, I didn't want like this to like affect my teaching job at all. Um, so I changed my channel name, got rid of my real name, like entirely Ava is a nickname, but it's not like my government name, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I started this seven years ago. Um, actually, when my parents were on vacation um, for the 4th of July, they were out of town and I had the whole house to myself, dog sitting, and I was like, let's let's make a video like no one's home um i used to be really 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 self-conscious about filming with other people in the house um so now i don't really care because i've been doing it for so long um but just so you know if you do start a channel like that is totally normal um i know i look really weird right now bronzer's going up here okay don't worry um <laughs> anyway so um, I actually started because I was going into college. I just graduated high school and I was depressed. I wanted friends. I didn't really have a lot of friends that read the same types of books as me. I kind of read a little bit of everything. Um, I love contemporary, monster, sci-fi, alien, historical. Like I love so many different types of romance books and my friends who read, I absolutely love them, but they basically only read fantasy romances and I wanted kind of like more. And so I was like, let's let's um let's try and make some friends so i decided to make a first booktube video and post it on july 2nd of 2017 <laughs> so um yeah that's why i started that one and then i also started my chronic illness youtube channel which i have honestly not posted on in maybe over a year um because i was going through a really 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 bad flare-up if y'all like I think I mentioned it briefly like a few minutes ago like really bad flare-up and I did not feel good and I wanted to connect with other people who were chronically ill um 
And yeah, I haven't posted on there in a while because I have really bad imposter syndrome when it comes to that channel um, because my chronic illness is so up and down like a roller coaster. So like I'll feel fine for a week and then the next month I'll faint one day. And it's it's hard to make content on, on a, an account you feel like you have no place in. Like I feel like what I don't feel like I'm worthy enough or I'm not, it's hard to, like I should not be saying this, but I feel like I'm not sick enough to make content for that channel. I do have chronic illness. I am disabled. I I deal with a lot of crap, but like at the same time, I don't feel like I am the type of person that people should turn to when needing advice or needing someone to relate to with their chronic illness. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'm going in with some setting powder. This is the e.l.f. Um, perfect finish HD powder. Um, so I just put this on under my eyes and kind of like in my t-zone. Someone asked what was my most recent DNF or did not finish book. I actually don't keep track of these books anymore. Um, I don't really talk about did not finish books on my channel like books I decided not to finish. I just don't finish them and I honestly couldn't tell you the last one that I did. I do it all the time where I get like a few chapters in and I'm like nope not feeling it. I don't even add them on Goodreads like I don't even I don't even say that I'm reading a book until I'm for certain that I'm actually going to be finishing it. Just because I'm in that stage now in my reading that I'm like I don't want to waste my time. So I actually do enough a lot of books but they go poof out of my brain. Like I don't remember, I'm so sorry. <laughs> How do you deal with burnout and managing real life with booktube? This is a great question, okay. Um, first of all, I'm also going in with my bronzer. This is NYX. I really also like NYX stuff, I guess. Okay, so managing booktube, burnout, everything like that. So um, it's hard, okay? It is very hard. I actually really love listening to my body and what I am feeling and what I want to do. So like today, I'm like, I feel good and I feel really good. Let's film. I don't film just one video because if I'm feeling good and I'm feeling like, like I can film, I normally bulk film so that I don't get overwhelmed later on when I haven't I don't have anything to edit or I don't have anything to post like that's why I bulk film bulk film I feel like is so underrated like more people need to bulk film sometimes I'll literally film six videos a day and yeah it's freaking exhausting but I'd rather like spend my time throughout the week editing those videos than having to get all done up and film again I also make sure to plan a lot I plan a lot with my booktube um I keep a running spreadsheet on my uh, Google Drive and what videos that I want to do. Like I have hundreds of videos. I actually have a tutorial on how I manage that system. I'll link that down below and how I like make booktube videos and stuff. Um, like how I plan them. And like I have stuck by that method for the past, I want to say like three years. And it has made my content creation like so much easier, especially with like being a booktuber. So, and then I just also want to say like I. I have gotten burnt out. I think like literally last month, I didn't even post a June TBR because I didn't feel like filming. I felt awful. I was doing a bunch of crap and um, I was like, let's just not post a video. That's the first time I have not posted a video like in a very long time. Normally I'm able to replace it with something else because again, I bulk film and bulk upload and just have videos on the back burner, but I had nothing. And so, um, yeah, that was the first time in a very long time that I didn't, but you don't beat yourself up about it. If you like just wanna film for the heck of it, like do it, just do it for fun. Like that's what I recommend doing. Just have fun with it. Someone asked me what my comfort read is. Ooh, great question. Um, when I think of a comfort read, I think of a book that like I return to all the time that um, I just, I love reading that gives me good fuzzy feely vibes. Um, and that one is going to go to Royally Matched by Emma Chase. Um, this is a the second book in a series actually, but this one's like one of my favorites of all time. Um, and it's about the crown prince of a made up country, like that's real in the series, but made up for us called Wesco. Um, and basically he has decided to do bachelor royal edition to find his princess but he ends up falling for one of the contestant's sisters instead who was like joined her um during filming and um she is like everything to me i freaking love her so much her name is sarah i love her sarah and henry they're beautiful so that one i literally have reread i want to say over six times in my life i love it so much um and i do recommend reading the um 
other book too before you get into that one because there's like some ramifications. This is book two. So I do recommend reading Royally Screwed before you get to that one. Even though Royally Screwed is not better than Royally Matched, it's still like, it's good. It's good. If you could ship a character from one book with a character from another book, who would they be? Y'all coming at me with the very good questions. By the way, I'm going in with Milani eyeshadow primer. Um, but anyway, I think a funny one would be Cassian from the Aquarius Girls and Roses series and Bryce from um, Crescent City, the Crescent City series. Like I know their partners are supposed to be together. I get it, Nesta and Cassian forever. Uh, right now I am a Hunt and um, Bryce shipper also. So um, I think they're supposed to be like with their person. But if I had to choose, I would say Bryce and Cassie would have so much fun together. I'm just saying. Fellow chronic girl here, what's your biggest advice on working, being able to create content, read while still battling, constantly fighting with your body? I'm currently trying to find the perfect balance myself. I don't have balance. <laughs> I don't. I think um, one of the things that I do that I think I already said is bulk filming because there are times when I feel absolutely awful, like absolutely awful, can't get out of bed. And luckily I have videos that are already like pre-done for me that um, I'm able to like post. I'm actually gonna be using one of these shades from like kind of like a blush palette, we're fine. <laughs> um, but, oh, this is also an e.l.f. palette, by the way, I love e.l.f. if you could not tell. Um, but it, I have not found a balance, like at all. <laughs> I have found it to be incredibly difficult. I don't have a balance, honestly. Um, I try to just listen to my body and I try not to beat myself up if I'm not able to create content when I want to. Um, Cause like there'll be days when I plan on, oh, this Saturday I have nothing going on. Let's make that a filming day or an Instagram picture taking day. And then I wake up and I feel awful. Like I'm not going to beat myself up that I feel bad. Uh, it's been hard. Like it has been so hard for me to get to that point. But um, I try to just listen to my body and be like, no, you need to lay down for now. Maybe you'll feel better in like five hours or something. But right now you need to like scroll on your phone or like go back to sleep, honestly. Just like listen to yourself, which is so hard as someone who like just wants to get things done when they want to. But you have to listen to your body in certain circumstances. So it's, it's hard. But I do take advantage really of the days when I feel well. Um, so like I said, I bulk film a lot. I take a lot of pictures of my books, like also when I'm filming. So like after I film, I do a session of um, Instagram picture taking. And so that'll already be on my phone. So if I'm not feeling well, if I'm not able to even like get out of bed, I still have like my computer that I'm able to edit on. And um, if I'm feeling well enough to do that, then that is a like available for me to do. So um, honestly, just like prepping prepping stuff is what I recommend doing. It's it's hard, so I feel you. What is one book you have been putting off to read or that you are scared to read? Oh my gosh, there are so many books that I'm scared to read. I am really bad with reading hyped books. Like there are books that I wanna read, but I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so hyped. I don't know why they get me, they just do. I am scared of them. <laughs> One that I've been putting off reading is From, Bro From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitage. I don't know why I put that off, but I have. I have the book. I literally bought the audiobook. So I'm trying to find my eyeliner, but it's literally sitting like right next to me right here. I have it. I have the audiobook. <laughs> I'm scared to read it because it's so hyped. It's so hyped up and I'm afraid I'm not gonna like it. Yeah, and I also don't think this, is this series over yet? Y'all tell me, I don't know. But um, yeah, I've also heard like mixed things, but I wanna read it. I still do. I just, I haven't yet. <laughs> I am going in with the NYX Professional Makeup Epic Link, Epic, whoa, Epic Ink Liner. I do my top liner with this. Um, but my next question is, any book slash audiobook that you are most looking forward to? Ooh, okay, so wait one second. I don't think I can talk and do this at the same time. There we go. That's my top liner done, let that dry. Um, so there's this book that I've been dying to read. It's called His to Sorrow. Um, which is a mafia romance with disability representation with a wheelchair user and someone who has EDS, which is a chronic illness that is very similar to my own. And oh my gosh, I wanna read it so bad, but I really wanna finish. I'm in the middle of two books right now and I feel like I need to finish them or I won't go back to them. Like I need to finish them and then I can get into his tesoro. Like I wanna read the book so badly. A few of my friends wrote the arcs for it and they absolutely love it. So I, I, I need to get to it. Ooh, someone asked me, what is my favorite thing to bake? If y'all did not know, I love baking. I have a very small 
baking business um, just for like people around me in town. Um, I am a celiac, so I eat gluten-free. So everything that I bake is gluten-free. Also, this is the Voluminous L'Oreal Paris Primer. I always do um, primer on my lashes. I think they make them longer. Like they don't clump up as much if I use this. So I do recommend using this if you have not. So I love baking so many things. I would say one thing that I love baking, but I'm not very good at yet are macarons. I'm trying to get better. I made like these kind of like Reese's inspired ones where it's like chocolate, the chocolate almond cookie um, sandwich part. And then the filling is like a peanut butter filling that reminds me of like the center of a Reese's peanut butter cup. Um, cause I'm obsessed with Reese's and they like turned out okay. Like they tasted good, but the texture of like the cookie part was off. Like they needed to be in the oven longer. And so like, I love making them. I just need to get better at baking them. It just takes a long time. When I put the primer on, I then go in with the, um, L'Oreal Lash Paradise mascara. I use waterproof because I have deep set eyes and mascara gets everywhere if it's not waterproof <laughs> um, because it just sticks to my lids and everything. Okay, so my next one is um, one thing you have learned in the last seven years on booktube. There are many things that I have learned. Um, the big one it definitely is to just like be yourself. So when I first started my channel, I thought I had to be like Christine Riccio. So Christine Riccio used to be like, pulling bananas books on booktube like she was like the big booktuber um when I first started and she read like YA books um and was very energetic always stood up for all of her videos like like I was like okay I have to be like her and so I tried to stand up for like every single one of my videos um except for like the first two I think when I was like sitting on my bed and like the camera was shaking the whole time like no <laughs> and like I tried to be such high energy and I just wasn't myself like I hate those videos of myself because I'm like that's not me I'm putting on a face and that's definitely not me I've definitely learned like you just need to be yourself even if that's like rambling to your phone for like an hour while you do makeup when you don't think anyone will watch this like I have fun doing this so <laughs> someone asked me what is your favorite memory of something booktube related um I would say definitely like the friendships that I've made here have been absolutely life-changing I've met some of my best friends in the entire world on this little corner of the internet and then it's wild to me. I honestly am so blessed that I've decided to do this because who knows where I would be or what I would be doing with my life. Like, I'm just forever grateful um, for my friendships. And so I would say my favorite memories are when I've been able to meet my friends in person. There was this big retreat that we did, I wanna say two years ago in Atlanta where I got to meet some of my friends, um, book signings that I've been able to go to, probably like even though book bonanza itself last year like wasn't the safest thing ever i loved hanging out and seeing my friends and like um getting to spend like quality time with like my two friends zay and um victoria and so like that was absolutely amazing and something i will treasure for like my whole entire life and also obviously meeting authors at those events too like i literally have a picture behind me of me meeting like the queen ruby dixon so like that was life-changing also. Are there any books that you regret buying? Not right now. Like I am so picky right now with what books I choose to buy. Um, I have not bought a lot of books this year. Like I've mainly myself bought like, a, like a few. Like I, I don't buy a lot of books right now. I am on a huge like budget because I'm trying to move. And so I'm really being conscientious of what I'm buying. Also, by the way, e.l.f. primer that is absolutely beautiful. I love it. I don't know. I don't, I kind of like keep those things out of my brain. Like once like I finished the book and I didn't really like it, I just like poof, it's gone. Like why waste space in my brain for books I don't care about? Let's think about good books, you know? Someone asked what my top three Ruby books are. When She Belongs is like this big blue one right here. I would definitely say that one is a top favorite. That one's beautiful and amazing. Let's do The King Spinster Bride. This one right here, you can't really see it. Put a picture on the screen though. King Spinster Bride and Barbarian's Redemption. I think I'm going with those three. Even though those are like my three favorite, like I love all of her stinking books. Like they're so good. Which non-main character are you most like? 
Ooh, great question. I'm actually thinking of this character from Man in Charge by Laurel and Page, which um, the heroine, her best friend has my medical condition and I relate to her so stinking hard. Like her friend literally faints in the middle of like a theater. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've done that. But in a worse scenario, I've done that at a daycare center. <laughs> where I worked at like it was not good like kids were laughing at me so like I really relate to her um so that's what I that's that's immediately who popped in my head um so I'm gonna line my lips with an elf cream glide liner in a nude color we have two questions left which is amazing because I just have my lips to do okay lips are lined which is amazing someone asked me if I had to narrow it down my top five favorite books of the year oh my god Hard question. Um, let me see. Let me pull up my Goodreads because, again, I was not prepared for this at all. I'm just looking at what I've read this year so far. Um, let's see. I did love, I read both books in Emma Ham's Deep Water series. So um, Whispers of the Deep and Song of the Abyss. So can that count as like one? I loved Forget Me Now by Julie Soto. That one was really good. Like a Second Chance of Romance. Ugh, I loved that one. Oh, The Friendship Study. That one's so good. That one's so good. That one is one of the books that like I loved so much I had to buy a physical copy like right then and there after I finished it. So that one like was number like three. So what's two more? I mean, House of Flame and Shadow was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. So <laughs> let's put that one on the list. And let's also do A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott. That one was amazing, but I hate how you had to make me choose. <laughs> Um, there's probably ones that I'm gonna think about after this and be like, I can't believe you forgot that book, Avery. <laughs> and then I have my lipstick, which is a L'Oreal Color Rich in the shade 800. My last question is, what is the one thing you enjoy most about reading? I love this question. Um, one second, before I answer that, I'm gonna set my face with the e.l.f. Stay All Night setting spray. Um, so I love this question. I love so many things about reading, but I think the thing that I love the most is how welcoming the community is um, and like how I've been able to make friends and meet like my people just because we love books. I actually have social anxiety. If you could not tell, I'm just talking to my camera alone. So it's way easier for me to talk than in person. Um, but I have a really hard time conversing, talking with people. So it's actually been like pretty amazing being able to make friends and connect over books like through an internet screen, honestly. It's been great. It's been a great way for me to get out of my shell and talk to people more, which is amazing. Um, and I also just love how with this community and me reading these romance books, I get to read whatever the heck I want. <laughs> like I get to read what makes me happy. There have been multiple people in my life that have been like, why are you reading that? Do you know what? These like alien romance monster effing books, like they make me happy. Like I'm just having fun. I'm living my life. Like, why can't you? Why do you have to worry about me? So um, no, there have been plenty of people though in my life that literally think like, you're going to hell because you read what you read, which, isn't bad. Like I'm just reading about people falling in love with each other and there's nothing to be ashamed about with that. So I love how I can just be me when I read. So anyways, there you have it. I am all ready to go to film some videos. Thank y'all so much for joining me. And if you would like me to do another Q and A style video, leave your questions down below for me and I will answer them in my next one if I decide to do this. I love doing this. I see Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings and McKay from Oh Hey It's McKay like do this all the time. So I thought I'd give it a little a little gander. Um, So yeah, thank y'all so much by the way also for seven years on booktube. I would not be here without y'all, not at all. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, if you liked any of the books that I talked about in today's video, let me know and comment what you think about them below. Um, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any makeup product emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.